We had a nice day a couple days ago. It got up to 77 degrees. So I took out the 18,000 BTU Amana Cool Zone to give it a second test because the first test, it was kind of cold. It was only like 60 degrees, maybe like really low 60s. So it was not a good test of the performance. It seemed like it operated okay during that test, but there was pretty much no load on the machine at that point. So I took it out into the 77 degree day and it gets a zero. It did the same thing it was doing last year. The evaporator coil does not get cold all the way through and the compressor reaches absurd operating temperatures. I turned it on for about 20 or 30 minutes and I went and did something else. And when I came back to the unit, the compressor surface was 194 degrees, which is getting to the danger zone because the actual compression mechanism, the the vein and the that circle piece, I don't know what it's called, that thing, the windings and so forth, those are typically about 30 degrees higher than the surface temperature of the, of the outside of the compressor. So that means the compressor is sitting there operating around, you know, 220, 230 degrees, which is just too hot. And uh, so that was exactly what it did last year, too. I remember towards the end of last year, uh, that's, that's what was happening. So I know that the condenser on that thing is shot. It's all rotted and breaking down and decaying and consequently the airflow is pretty abysmal so i went ham on that condenser and i did some things that should not be done which is why i didn't show it on video and i got the condenser i would say at least 85 percent clear the airflow improved drastically so i cleaned it out real good and now the airflow is reasonable and it's getting decent subcooling now through the condenser. Unfortunately, that did not really change the operation temperature of the compressor. It seemed like it was a little better running on low. It would at least come back to the compressor kind of cold, but on uh, medium and high, it, it, it wasn't working right. So, there's a problem with that machine. And it's a, it's a very high superheat condition in the evaporator. So, it's either got to be a low charge or some kind of metering device issue. Now, it doesn't seem like it's any worse than it was last year. Of course, I also haven't really tested it on a hot day yet. You know, 77 is a lot less than what it was going through last year. The living room on a hot day can get up to over 110 degrees. So, it's the machine in there gets a workout for sure. Uh, but it's not right, so it can't go in the window yet. I'm going to try to fix it. I will. I got to get gauges on there to figure out exactly what's going on. I have some some piercing valves on order and I'm going to try to fix that machine. I would also well, before we get into that. So the bottom line is I can't use that machine right now. I have to fix it. So that means I'm going to have to buy a new air conditioner for the living room because the only option that I have right now is the 18,000 BTU cool zone with the overheating compressor and warm evaporator or the Carrier International Series 27,500 BTU with a floating compressor and no front cover. Now, my first choice <clears throat> to in the living room 
would be that carrier. It would be a dream come true to run that carrier in a living room. So if anybody has the front cover to one of those things, the height is 17 inches as opposed to 15 inches like on the 12K. It's a 17-inch height. If anybody has that cover and you'd be willing to get rid of it, let me know. Send me an email. Uh, type in the comment box because I need a cover for that in order to use it in the living room. Because it's got to be presentable in there. I would use it in the garage the way it is, but in the living room it needs to have reasonable cosmetics. So I hope that somebody out there has a cover uh, for that for that machine that I could have. I think chances are slim because it's it's an unusual size. You know, twenty seven thousand BTU is is enormous. Not many people had those, um, but hopefully, maybe somebody's got one. So. <clears throat> At this point, I have to buy a new air conditioner, which I don't want to do, and that's not what I want, but you can only have what exists. So I got to buy a new air conditioner at least to get me through the start of the summer until I have time to fix the cool zone because I, I don't, I don't want to be playing with air conditioners right now. I, I want to clean up the yard. So that when the weather gets nice, I can enjoy the yard. And then as the summer progresses, you know, maybe in, uh, say, maybe in June, I can start work on air conditioners. Plus, if I got to check the charge, you really need a hot day. And I can't have the living room without the air conditioner once it gets hot. So I need, I need a drop-in replacement, which unfortunately is a is a new unit which I really don't want and is a waste of money but whatever I could alternatively run two 12,000s in there but I have a couple oppositions to that I think that would be a uh, an emergency scenario only kind of deal so not good so the cool zone is not working properly I'm going to try to fix it but it's going to be a couple of months please let me know if somebody has a cover for a 27,500 BTU Carrier International Series. Again, it's a, it's a 17 inch height. And now I gotta figure out what air conditioner to buy. They all stink. It's just the question of finding out which one is the least stinky of them all. <laughs>